In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to create a shelf button, which will allow us to select all the controls for our character. But more importantly, why we would do that. Why we would want to select all the controls for our character with one button. Generally, if we think about classical animation, classical animators will create a series of key drawings or key poses, which define the action that their character is taking. But in Maya, we're moving the character around with controls. When we're blocking our animation, we're animating pose to pose. So every time we set a pose, you want to key all the controls to key that pose on the timeline so that it sticks in place and then we go down the timeline, move our character into another pose, and then key all the controls again. In Maya, to select multiple controls, after you select the first control, you have to hold shift down to select all the other controls. Now that's time consuming and it's generally just a real pain. So we don't want to have to do that every time we set a pose, we don't want to have to shift select all the controls. So the only reason for this button is just to click the button and it selects all the controls for us and then we can just press S on the keyboard to key all the controls and that will key our pose. Now there's another way to do this, we can use character sets, but I don't teach character sets because of my experience in the industry, it's been an issue with some pipelines and some studios because the process they take in the pipeline to render the shots, they'll combine all the elements of the scene together and there's been just been some issues, some conflict issues uh, with certain pipelines at particular studios that they've asked me not to use character sets. So the workaround is using a button and it's pretty much a, a fail safe way to animate pose to pose. It doesn't affect the pipeline because you've actually keyed all the, uh, all the controls. You can see all these shelves have uh, already have buttons that Maya already puts in here, but uh, we're going to go to the custom shelf. It's just a blank shelf that allows us to, to add any, any buttons, any custom buttons that we create. First thing you want to do is open up the script editor which is right in the bottom right hand corner of your Maya interface. All right, so we'll go to edit and let's go down to clear all. It's a bit of a process, but I always explain to people it's, it's short term pain for long term gain. We only have to do this once. And once it's done, we'll have our button and we don't ever have to create it again. The way the animation is done is basically lip sync is done first, usually by another person if you're working in a production, a larger production. So lip sync and then the body animation is done by us animators and then the facial animation we do as well. But the facial animation is, is a, another pass. So it's lip sync, body animation, and then facial animation. So we're just going to create a button that selects all the controls for the body and not the face and not this master control either. We want to animate the master control and the facial animation on separate passes. On this particular rig, the F is, stands for face. Those are his face controls. So we're going to select the head. I like to go head to toe. You want to orbit around your character to get a good angle on it. So you're not accidentally selecting multiple controls if you're using a box. We just want to make sure that we select the control we're trying to select only. So I'm just going to go down and get the two neck controls on this rig. And then I'm going to do one arm and then the other arm. So we're just going to continuously orbit around and get a good angle on it. So nothing else is behind it. I'm going to get the clavicle, the shoulder, I'm going to get the elbow. This is a forearm twist, our wrist control. There's an IKFK switch here. We can select that and then the hand as well. So you can see every time I select something, it creates a little mel script. So I'm just going to keep going one at a time, just holding shift down. Sometimes it's handy to drag a box over it. If you make a mistake, you have to go back to edit and clear all again and start over. So that's why I'm orbiting around and being very careful so I don't have to start over again. Going down the center of the body and now I'm going to get the feet and the two knee controls. Okay, so now we have everything selected. You can see our script here. You can drag the, the bottom pane down a little bit so you have more room. Now that we have the script, this is basically going to be the script to select all of our controls. So what we want to do is drag over all that script, make sure you get all of it, and then place your cursor anywhere over top of the selection, press down your middle mouse button, and drag it over to the shelf, and you'll see a little plus sign there appear next to your pointer, and just release. And then a new window pops up, asks you Mel, Python, or Cancel. We want to select Mel, because this is an L script. And as soon as you do that, you'll notice a new button here. Now we can close our script editor. We don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to right click over top of this new button. Let's go to open. And this is where we can name our button. We'll just go to icon label and let's just name it. I'm just going to name him super. You can change the, the icon of the button as well, just by going where it says icon name, the very first option there, clicking the, uh, the little folder and you can browse for an image and we'll hit open. And you can see that it changes the, the picture too. But again, I don't really bother with that. Usually you can click save all shelves. And if you just click off in space to deselect the character, just to test it, we're going to click the button and just make sure you can see that it selects everything. And that's how you create the, the shelf button. When you start animating, we can get our character into a pose just by selecting each control individually. 
and moving your character into his initial pose. And I'll just do something very, very quick here. By the way, if you're accidentally selecting geometry, you can click this button here. And that basically turns off object selection. So you're only selecting control curves. Okay, so say this is my initial pose for my character. Now I need to select all the controls to key them for this one pose. So I'm gonna hit my button and then we're just gonna press S on the keyboard. And as soon as you do that, you can see the channels turn red over in the channel box here. And we have a little red tick on the timeline, which indicates that we have a keyframe there. Now there's a keyframe set for all the controls. All the controls have, have a keyframe on it. If I go and select any one of these controls, you'll see that that red tick stays there. If I select the master control, which is not included in our button, you see those no, there's no keyframe for that. Or if I select any of the facial controls, there's no keyframe there. It's just the controls for the body. So if I go down the timeline now to say frame five, I want to set my next key pose. So I'll just go into some anticipation pose here. Okay, so say that's my, my second pose. We can just click off, actually, and we can click our button again to select all the controls. Now that button, again, is just to select all the controls. It doesn't key anything. So once we've uh, selected all the controls with our button, we can press S again on the timeline. Now if I play that back, see we have pose one and pose two. We can also use our greater than less than keys on the timeline right next to the M to tap between poses. Now I'll set a third pose just to demonstrate further. Okay, so say that's our third pose. I'm not sure what the narrative is here. I'm just setting random poses to demonstrate the button. So now this is our third pose and we'll select our button again. We'll click on our button to select all the controls. We can see our first two there. Now, an important thing to, to note, once you've taken the time to go through and move all the controls to get the character into the pose that you like, you know, that could take you some time to do. You don't want to scrub the timeline because you'll lose that pose. It'll actually snap back to the previous pose that you set a key on. So once you've actually um, spent the time to get them into the into a, into their pose, just click off and space here to deselect everything, and you want to reselect everything again. Do not scrub the timeline, and just press S. It'll key everything again. Now you can scrub to check your animation. So now we have pose one, pose two, pose three. So this is considered blocked animation, and it's just rough. And then from there, we can adjust our timing by clicking on our button to select all the controls. Uh, say we want him to go into his anticipation pose faster, we can hold shift down, highlight that one key by clicking on it, and we can just move it, say to the left, we're just gonna move it closer to pose one there, so there's less in-betweens. So it's just an easy way to animate in a pose-to-pose -pose fashion for blocking animation, and it also allows us to select all the controls so we can retime our animation on the timeline as well, so we can refine our blocking a little bit before we go into the graph editor for further refining. You also want to create a button for the facial animation as well. Now the eyes, usually I do eye direction after the body animation is done, I'll just do the eye direction. Um, most rigs have a, a control that controls both eyes, similar to this. Then there'll be a control for each eyeball individually. My personal preference is I just animate the eye direction uh, as a separate pass without a button, just by selecting and keying the individual controls. But for the facial controls, there's usually more controls involved. So I definitely want to create a button so I'm not shift selecting everything. On this particular rig, we basically have controls for the mouth and we have controls for the eyebrows. When we're blocking animation, we really want to continue thinking pose to pose. So we can create a button for the mouth controls, which has lip sync and expressions in it. And then we want to uh, include all these other controls as well that help us to refine the, the mouth shape. So we'll open up our script editor again and just basically do the same thing. We'll go to edit, clear all, and then we can shift select each one of these controls. And again, just highlight all the mail scripts, middle mouse button, drag them to our shelf, release, and we'll choose mail. 
and then we'll right click on that new button, select open, and we'll just give that a name. I'm going to name it mouth controls, or I'll just name it mouth, and we'll save all shelves. You can add, of course, you can add a, an image if you like. You can create one in Photoshop or GIMP or something like that, and I think it's an 8x8 or maybe a 12x12 12 12 image but I don't usually bother with the image. Unless you're rigging for a production, you definitely want to put an image in there. The important thing is that you give it an actual name so you know what it is. Save all shelves. Now when we click off in space there to deselect, when we click it, it selects all the controls for the mouth. And then I'll do the same thing for the eyebrows as well. Edit and clear all. Okay, so if we select this F above his head, on this particular rig, it controls his eyelids. And it also controls his eyebrow up and down movements. Then we have these separate controls just to further articulate the eyebrow posing. So we definitely don't want to be shift selecting those and we want to animate the eyebrows pose to pose as well for the blocking pass. So again I'm going to go to edit, clear all, make sure we have a clean script editor, select each one of the eyebrow controls and then we'll select that face control as well. Select all the controls that have to do with the eyebrows and face and then again I'll select all that mail script, middle mouse button drag it to my shelf and release and then we'll choose mail, right click, open, I'm just going to call it lid brow and save all shelves. And now we have a button for lids and brows, we have a button for the mouth, and we have a button for the body as well. So I'm going to close up the script editor, we don't need that anymore. So I'll just quickly go through and demonstrate facial animation pose to pose. So normally the lip sync would be done first, and then I'm going to animate the, the body, and then I would do the eyes. So I've already animated the body, so I'll just do some animation on the, the eyes first. This is the order in which I would do it. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm just, um, just sort of making this up as I go along. There's no real narrative here. So I'm thinking I might have them blink after the anticipation pose or during the anticipation and switch eye direction to look at screen left. So we'll just set another key here and I'll change his eye direction. Hold my shift down, right click and let's go to the tangents area and I'm going to choose stepped just so that the eye just pops into its position and I'm going to put a blink there later. So I'm just sort of planning it out of my head. I know where I want him to blink. I have an idea of where I want him to blink. I'm going to cover the eye direction change with a blink. So there's the eyes, and let's go through and we'll do the face now. So I'll do a pass on the mouth. I'll do the blocking for the mouth controls, and then I'll do another pass on the lids and brows. So just selecting each individual control, I'm going to use some of the channel box controls here just to get them into some expression, and I'll use all the controls. Okay, so I'll use this as the, the initial mouth pose. Let's click on our mouth button, we'll key that. So perhaps for the anticipation, we'll close his mouth. Just going through and using all the controls just to get him into whatever pose. This is the pose that I want, so I'm going to click on my mouth button, key that, and let's go to our third pose. And we don't have to do it on the same frame that the pose is on. We can uh, space these, these key poses for the, for the mouth uh, as far apart as we'd like on the timeline. Okay, so I'll go with something like that. Again, we'll click on our mouth button to select all the controls again, and we'll key that. So now we have three poses for just the mouth. Okay, so now we'll do a pass on the eyebrows and lids. Now I remember I had him change eye direction at frame six. So I'm going to remember that and just make sure his eyes are closed at frame six. You don't always have to cover eye direction changes with a blink, but I would say a lot of the time when we, when we change eye direction, we blink. So we first want to get our eyebrows and lids into their initial pose. All right, so let's go with the pose like that for the lids and brows. I'm going to select my lid and brow button to select all the controls for the lids and brows, and we'll hit S on the keyboard to, to key it. And let's get them into a blink. So the way I time the blink is basically one frame to close. You can do one or, one or two frames to close, one or two frames to stay closed, and then one or two frames to open. So I basically go one, one, and two. Let's bring his brows down for the blink. Okay, so this is our second pose. I'm going to key that. So I'm going to select my button and key it. And then I'm going to hold it for one frame, so I'm going to middle mouse button drag over one frame and press S on the keyboard just to copy that keyframe over with all the controls selected. So one frame to close, one frame to hold, and then we'll open, him, we'll open his eyes in two frames. So we'll go two frames down the timeline and we'll get him into his, his final facial position. And then we'll just go with something like that and we'll click our button for lids and brows and we'll key that. All right, so that's it. That's the general idea of the workflow where we, we create buttons for groups of controls that we want to select all at one time and key so that we can block our animation pose to pose before we start to refine our animation further.